The State Board of Education has a brand new chairman and several new members, and we're fortunate to have some of them joining us this week. First up is the newly elected chairman of the State Board, Eric Davis. Eric, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Just for our viewers, a little background on, on um, Eric Davis. He is a Charlotte native, a West Point graduate, and uh, you have been working for Wells Fargo now for, I guess, almost 20 years? That's right, and, uh, and a graduate of North Carolina Public Schools. There you go. Well, that, And that's important in your role as the chair of the State Board of Education. Well, let's talk about that role of the State Board. Now, obviously, you've been on the board during these last couple of years. been a lot of, I mean, let's, let's be honest, been a fair amount of sort of turmoil, a little bit of uh, acrimony. The, the, the General Assembly passed legislation that took away a lot of power. There was a lawsuit. The Supreme Court ultimately ruled that those issues are, are, are settled, more or less. But um, I guess now, as the new chairman, you replaced uh, Bill Kobe. Um, do you think that the State Board and Superintendent Johnson can, can kind of put those things behind you and work together? Well, Keith, um, I have the utmost respect for the office of the State Superintendent, and in uh, my time I've had the good fortune to work with a number of superintendents, both local and state, who are skilled at working with their board for the best interest of their students. And the fact is the system can only be as successful as the superintendent is successful. So our board is committed to working in an open and collaborative way with the superintendent. And in doing so, we respect the superintendent's role to manage the day-to-day -day affairs of the department. And we will, at the same time, execute our roles in terms of overseeing his management of the agency and our policy-making authority. Now, from time to time, that will likely create challenging but professional conversations that we will have in the public spectrum because the board must do its right. uh, work in the public spectrum. But I'm confident that moving forward in January, we'll keep the best interest of our students in mind. Well, it's, 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 that's actually what you, you mentioned about sort of oversight and policy. That was actually one of my questions was when you think about the role of the State Board of Education vis-a-vis -vis the uh, state superintendent, I mean, are you partners or are you, uh, or are you more of a watchdog oversight? Or both? Well, in, in my opinion, in the best interest of our students, we're partners and it's a collaborative teamwork relationship. But unfortunately, the recent events have, have changed that relationship and caused it to evolve. But we will endeavor to work as partners and collaborators, ensuring open communication and participation uh, between the board and the superintendent um, in order to uh, do what's right for our students. All right, so we're going to be we're heading in. There will be a special session in a couple of weeks, but the, we're really looking, I guess, from from overall where education funding and policy happens in the long session next year and starting in January. So, so what are the state boards and what are you as chairman? What are your priorities moving into 20, the 2019 legislative session? Sure. So at our last meeting, we approved a legislative agenda and and a board a budget expansion request, which. We did so in collaboration with the state superintendent and his staff, so we're making one submittal this year. So that's progress in and of itself. And that but, didn't happen last year. No, it did not. And that, and that was more of a story. That, well, that's, 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 that is a... So a, I think that's a sim, more than a symbolic measure. That, that's a demonstration that, that uh, we're moving forward together. The most, or the largest element of that request is about $70 million in additional school support personnel, school nurses, counselors, psychologists, school resource officers, and so mm -hmm. forth. And, and that's a good first step. But in fact, it will take us 10 years to get to the national average wow. in those positions if we continue at that pace. So we're gonna need to take that first step as a state this year and then accelerate the progress this year. As your headlines uh, indicated, our students are coming to us each day with greater issues, greater demands. Uh, we need more support for our students and teachers. And, and I think we ought to consider this school nurse in, as an investment, not as a cost. In fact, a recent study showed that, that if we had school nurses at the level of the national average, it would save on average 30 minutes per day for our teachers and over an hour per day with our assistant principals so that they could focus on educating our students, yeah. not having to uh, to support their needs. Yeah, we hit, you know we took our cameras down to the uh, to the teacher mart just to kind of talk to the teachers. Why are you here? And um, um, 
very few of them talked about teacher pay. They actually talked about those kinds of things. They talked about school resources and supports within the school that they thought that they didn't, they didn't have as much support as they needed or that they even used to have. Across the state, the number one thing we hear from superintendents running districts is the social, emotional, and mental health to their students are the primary factors inhibiting their education. And those are burdens that are placed on our principals and teachers each day that when, when our students come to school. We need as a state to do a better job of caring for our students when they're out of school and prior to them coming to school so that they come better prepared for our teachers. All right, let me ask you a shift gears. We, uh, uh, you had the, at your last meeting, you had a, a, a fairly spirited discussion about the innovative school district and the, uh, uh, the, the, the decision to possibly add Carver Heights um, Elementary School uh, into the ISD. It was delayed, um, and, uh, the, the, the board voted to push that decision until it's in a, in a, in a few weeks. What, were the, what are you doing now as chairman, as the board, to, I guess, to inform your decision uh, your, your final decision in December? Well, the Innovative School District highlights a trend across our state. If you look at the schools that were considered and the schools selected last year, the communities that those schools are in have certain common traits and characteristics. Declining population, decreasing enrollment, high concentrations of poverty, typically inadequate health care, difficulties in nutrition, uh, just a common thread of challenges before the students ever get to school. And so the innovative school district, if it's going to be a reform model going forward, is, needs to be part of a comprehensive effort by our state to deal with those underlying issues that inhibit our students' ability to succeed at school. In terms of the innovative school district itself, um, I think there's opportunities to improve that policy. For instance, if the innovative school district um, put the punitive transfer provision secondary and was primarily a partner to school districts, partner in the way of bringing effective strategies to turn around schools, but also uh, a, a push mm -hmm. of oversight and management urgency to help districts make those difficult and often unpopular decisions that are necessary in order to turn schools around and then hold in reserve and use selectively the transfer provision, I think that would be a more effective policy. Well, that makes, that makes, that makes a lot of sense, and, I, and I'm definitely, I want to talk to, we're going to keep following this issue, and I want to talk to our next guest a little bit more about it, but unfortunately, we're out of time right now. Uh, but thank you so much, Eric, for being here today. We look forward to having you on at another time. My pleasure. Thanks so much.